This is why I think Mike Bickle is such a great guy. You've got a man who is literally joy on legs. He is nearly always smiling. He is genuine and sincere in all he says and does. That was my honest impression of him after six years at IHOP. The best I can tell that's still true of him today. He loves Jesus, preaches the word, and not just any parts of the word, but the parts that talk about how much God loves us. He really, really loves us and Mike seems motivated by a genuine desire for people to experience God's love. Here's why I think Mike Bickle is such a good guy. In my lifetime of attending church up until age 18, I never saw a woman preach. Not once. I was there pretty much every Sunday. A conference here or there, maybe, but it was a touchy subject. I read a lot about women's roles in church and wrote a paper on it during my time at Wheaton. But my peers laughed at me. They were scoffing at any idea outside women submit and stay silent. It wasn't up for debate. I didn't realize the effect this had on me until I saw Jennifer Roberts preach at one thing. I'd never seen a woman preach like that on a platform for 15,000 people. Over the years, I'd watch women preach like Shelley Hundley, Dana Candler, Sarah Sun Kim, and Misty Edwards. This is normal in some denominations, but it was not normal for me. Where did these women learn to preach like that? They are just as good or even better than many men. How are they able to do this? Who lets them? Mike! with a giant beaming smile on his face like the proudest papa you ever saw. Mike doesn't just allow women to preach. He is the biggest cheerleader of women in general I have seen in my 36 years as a Christian. It's one thing to allow women authority, to participate, to teach, and preach. It's another thing completely to champion them the way Mike does. He deserves all the credit in the world for doing this. In all the praise he gets, he doesn't get enough for this. I remember walking into church as a child one May. My mother sighed and said, Why doesn't our pastor ever preach a Mother's Day message? She asked several times and I couldn't help but notice we usually got a Father's Day message. Why can't he preach a Mother's Day message? She'd ask with genuine discouragement. Years later, I sent her Mike's Mother's Day sermon, or some message I heard him preach more than once, ranting and raving about moms and how awesome and important they are. I had watched my mother express that she felt unseen, and while I became an adult, the following expectations were laid out for me. Don't forget. You're a woman. You must submit. Know your role. Know your place. The husband is the head. When you get married, you'll have to submit. Women don't teach in the church, not over men. They don't lead. They don't preach. Know your role, know your place, don't overstep. Did we mention submit? I watched women get hurt by these ideas and thought for sure I'd eventually be hurt by them too. Then I showed up at IHOP and watched women teach and preach boldly and unapologetically. These were women that have influence and authority and respect. I would look over at Mike and see this smiling goofy man and watch him prop up there flourishing like an Olympic powerlifter doing an overhead press with a smile on his face. I'd hear him say things day in and day out like this. When women are honored, the kingdom of God flourishes. We want to contend for their honor. Women have lived in so much abuse in some places in the body of Christ. Women are not seen as equals to men. I believe women can function in every way that men can in society, in politics, in government, in every way. In the body of Christ, women's insights are not sought after. They're not valued. Their work is seen as important but secondary. Let men do the real work. But that is not God's perspective. Mothers have the most influential ministry in the body of Christ throughout history. If I had to pick one group who has really made a grassroots change, it's mothers discipling children in their home. Those are things Mike said. I mean, how amazing is that? My only problem with the above statements is it's not some places women are seen as unequal. 
It's the majority of places in the body of Christ. Yes, the majority. This is a big deal. It affects over half the body of Christ. It affects all of us. I had to wait until I was 24 to hear women truly valued like this from the pulpit. And I heard it often. It's how everyone felt at IHOP about women. I left in 2014 and the above quotes are from a message Mike preached in May 2016 probably on Mother's Day. You've likely heard a lot or experienced yourself. Why Mike is such a great guy. Have you ever heard someone point out how well he champions women? Now you have. Spread the word. Have you noticed how other leaders are treating women in the church right now? Do SBC or John MacArthur come to mind? Guess what Mike's been up to in the last year? As scandal after abuse scandal broke in the news, Mike was using the end of IHOP's first conference in several years to preach directly to young moms. Yeah, I know. How could you not love this guy? Why young moms need not fear the coming crisis or something like that was the sermon title. And then there's Mike literally platforming young moms. I mean, who else is doing this? Do you follow a preacher who literally brings young mothers on stage the first chance he gets after a pandemic shut down? Have you heard a message like the one cited above? Ever? If you have and you got more of this, send it my way. I'm now 36 and it's as much a refreshing cup of cold water now as it was when I first witnessed it in my early 20s. Grown men, experienced preachers, a flourishing ministry, championing women. It's the exception, it's not the rule. And it's because of Mike. He is literally exceptional. And that's why I think he's such a great guy.